Hello everybody, thank you for joining me again today. I'm Lee from the craftyspark.co.uk and today we are making a box to keep these cards in which we made on my last video. Now I am actually going to do it so we can get six cards and envelopes. Now I've actually bought these envelopes because unfortunately we don't do um, craft coloured envelopes which is what I wanted because I thought they just match the cards really nicely don't they don't you think they're quite nice don't they so I've um, bought these ones just got them from eBay you could actually use the craft envelope paper that we do and make your own but why didn't I do that uh, I'm really honest I was being lazy <laughs> that's not really I was trying to think up some really fancy excuse then <laughs> but I can't think of one <laughs> oh, it's what my kids would call busted <laughs> oh well never mind let's make a box anyway shall we because that's actually what the video is about it's not really about my envelope making skills at all <laughs> oh dear right okay uh, let's put that there so you are gonna need your simply score board and your simply score tool now I'm just wondering actually we're going to be using 12 by 12 paper to make these because of the the size of the cards I'm just wondering should I do it in craft paper or whisper white um, do you know what I think I'll do both I'll do craft for the base and then whisper white for the top that look quite nice won't it right so let's start with our base um, I'm just trying to get some craft paper out of my my little cupboard well it's not covered at all it's a shelf right now then when you are making boxes the best way to do it is number one always use glue number two always make your lid slightly bigger than your base and number three try and get the walls of your box doubled up all right then you'll get a very nice sturdy box if you just do thin walled boxes or single walled boxes you're going to get an incredibly floppy tatty looking box all right so always try and double it up if you can it just makes it look so much nicer and the finish so much more professional right so we are starting with 12 inches by 12 inches now as I've already said did I say no I didn't say actually when I made these cards <laughs> they, in my last video they are six inch by six inches now I've measured my envelope and the envelopes I bought are exactly six inches by six inches which was a little bit of a nuisance because it meant I had to cut my cards just to slither down the side I did have some white ones already and the white ones are a bit bigger these are actually six and a quarter by six and a quarter which is what I was expecting the craft ones to be but never mind um, I would say before you actually start making your box make sure you measure your envelope because obviously your envelope is going to be a bit bigger than your card so always make sure you measure your envelope um, but -dum, but -dum, but -dum. I'm actually going to make this box I think I'll do it to fit the other envelopes because I think this was it's not very often you get an envelope that's six by six do you you get your card that's six by six envelopes usually bigger so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make the box six and a quarter yeah that's a better idea right so the box is going to be six and a quarter all right six and a quarter square obviously so the first thing we need to do now I'm actually going to talk you through how I'm going to work this out while I'm doing it because I think it will help you when you're trying to figure out your own boxes it will help you to be able to work them out a lot easier the first thing that you will need without a shadow of a doubt though is the simply scoreboard because 
you've got two layers of numbers. Can you, oops, I think you can see that. Is that still in focus? Yep. Can you see we've got a top layer and a bottom layer? Now, the reason for that is that top layer actually acts as a centre. The bottom layer acts as the ruler. All right. So we want to make our box to be six and a quarter inches wide. So what we will do is we divide six and a quarter in half. So that will actually give us three and one eighth. Then we go to our centre where it's a zero on the top line and we go across three and one eighth, which actually takes us to nine and one eighth. And that is where your first score then goes, whoops, scored it off the table then. Then you do the same going back the other way as well. So we go to three and one eighth, which actually takes us to two and seven eighths on our bottom ruler. And that is where we do our next score line. Okay, turn your card stock and do exactly the same thing again. So start at zero, go across to three and one eighth and do your first score line down. Start at zero, go back three and one eighth, do your first score line at two and seven eighths. That will then give you a square in the middle. If you measure in between those score lines you've just made, you will have a square that measures 6.25 or six and a quarter rather by six and a quarter. All right. So that's how we figure out where we need to do the first lot of score lines so that we can get even sides all the way around. Now, when we've done that, the next thing we need to be looking at is how deep we want the box. So if you just hold your cards, don't squeeze them. That's the last thing you want to do. You don't want to be squeezing them because you'd like, you don't want squash cards, do you? But hold your cards fairly loosely, grab a ruler and just measure that depth. Now I would say, whoops, hang on. I can actually hold them straight. That's about an inch and that's quite loose, I reckon. About right, about an inch bit fiddly we'll warn you but once you've got it you've got it or would you say that was an inch and a quarter it's very hard because this is where I need my husband to come and hold it for me which is what he usually does because I haven't got very big hands um so you know what I think I'm going to go for an inch and a quarter yeah I'm going to go for an inch and a quarter because the cards have all got the dimensionals in there so yeah we're going to go for an inch and a quarter so the next thing we do is we go across from our score line oops get it out the right way we're going to go across by an inch and a quarter so we are at nine and one eighths so we go to ten and one eighths plus a quarter so ten and three eighths is our next score line do the same going this way so we're at two and seven eighths at the moment so we're going to go to because we're counting backwards so we're going to one and seven eighths plus the quarter so we are on one and what's that say five eighths and then we're going to do the next line all right so we've done one up five eighths ten and three eighths so we turn it again we're going to do one and five eighths and we're going to do ten and three eighths so that's now given us the wall but it's just a single wall what we actually want is the double wall so we're going to score again onto this outside edge all right so exactly the same as before so we're going to go across one and a quarter because remember we're one and a quarter deep on our box so we're now at ten and three eighths that's where our score line is all right so we're going to eleven and three eighths and then we're going to go a quarter. So that's taking us to 11 and 5 eighths. All right. So next score line, 11 and 5 eighths. Back that way again. So we are now at 1 and 5 eighths. So we're going to go to 5 eighths. 
which is going to give us an inch and then a bit more and a quarter. So we're actually going to score at three eighths. All right, turn your cardstock, do the same. So score at three eighths. And what did I say the other one was? Hang on. Where am I? Ten and three eighths, eleven and three eighths and a quarter it takes us to uh, <laughs> eleven and five eighths. That's it. <laughs> Engage the brain, not the mouth. It's my teachers always used to tell me in school. <laughs> Right, so we have now got our first piece of scored card. Okay, so that is our base done. Move that out of the way. Let's get some cutting, shall we? Have some scissors. There we go. Use some. I use my new scissors. I managed to blunt my other ones cutting up sandpaper the other day. Bit of a stupid idea that. Right. Let's go this way round because I'm hoping. Can you see my score lines? Oh, a bit faint, aren't they? Alright, well, well, let's have a go. We're going to go down that score line there and straight down that score line there. Turn it so you're up the other way down the score line again and down that score oops down that score line again all right so we've now got flappy bits oops you know what I didn't do oh my word I didn't burnish the folds did I what a golly burnish your folds guys <laughs> makes a much better box when you've got burnished folds <laughs> Yeah, be a bit careful on those little ones though. I just take a little bit of coaxing to get them to fold properly. Oh, what a banana. Oh, never mind. Bit burnishing. That's it. There we go. Oh, let's get these ones done. Oh, I really should have done that first, shouldn't I? Like, mind you, don't tear your cardstock when you're doing burnishing like this. Sorry about that. It's me being a divvy. I bet there's people at home watching the video who, who were saying, yeah, but you haven't burnished them. Go back, you haven't burnished your folds. Well, next time, shout a bit louder, can you? So I can hear you and I can remember to do it. <laughs> oh, my word. Oh, come on, fold over for me. That's better. Right, where was I? Um, ah, yes, I know where I was. Right, now... We have cut down that one. We are now going to cut down the one next to it. Like that. And same again. Like that. Turn it up the other way. Do exactly the same on the other side. And again. There we go. Right. Now we are going to cut off these bits here. All right. But we're not going to just cut. We're going to go at a slight angle. So we're going to go. Um, hang on, let me think. Yeah. Uh, Oh well, yeah, I'll just use these scissors. All right, so you want a, a little notch going in there. That's what I'm trying to get out of my mouth. <laughs> like that. <laughs> oh, my word. It's one of them days, isn't it? 
one of them days turn it back up the other way do the same again so put your your notch on the ends so come in just slightly cut it at an angle so that when it folds over can you see how I've got that little gap there exactly what I'm looking for all right the larger bit do exactly the same thing let's cut a notch just down to that first score line just to that whoops to that first score line and again up the other A so you cut your first score line whoopsie daisy cut your first score line there we are now these tabs that we've got sticking out here I'm going to cut those onto that first score line as well so all of them are being chipped off and then let's see we've got rid of them all just notch your tabs all right because it will help to make your box shape better fold better and ultimately look better all right, so just go in slightly and snip out. Go in slightly, snip out. So you can you see how I've got that knot shape going on there? That's what we want to be going for. Oops, come out. Oh dear, I haven't cut that one very well. Better not tear it. So I'll end up ripping the card and it'll all go wrong, won't it? And I don't want to be doing that. That won't be any good at all. There we go. So we have now got this shape going on. Can you see that in the camera all right? I think you can, can't you? All right. Now, as I said just now, when you're making boxes, use glue always use glue when you're making a box unless you want your box to collapse and fail miserably or actually I'm saying use glue use glue use glue if you've got a really strong double-sided tape that works well personally I prefer glue though Ugh, hang on just got a yucky bit on the glue right so I'm gonna put some glue on these tabs like so and then I'm hoping you're going to be able to see this because I'm going to stand up again fold the side in all right can you see how I've lined that up there so I know that's nicely folded in and as I'm squeezing it shut there's a little bit of glue coming out that's all right not worrying about that I am worrying I've got nothing to wipe on. <laughs> there we go, that's better. Same on that side as well. So I'm just lining it up, making sure it's nice and flush, nice straight edge, pinching it just a bit with my thumb and my finger. And then what I'm going to do, this is why I've got my bone folder in my hand, I'm going to use my bone folder to squish oops can you see that i think you can see that i'm just gonna use my bone folder to push that glue right up to the edge and to force that nice and flat all right so same on this side whoops glue's just come out let's do it again so just um, Hang on, hang on, hang on. There we go. Oh no, I've got glue on my bone folder. It's all sticking. Let's turn it out the other way. So I'm just going to use my bone folder just to make sure that's nicely stuck down. All right. Where's the wet wipes gone? Just need to clean my bone folder off. and my fingers because I put far too much Tombow on there and managed to get it everywhere. It's a bit silly, isn't it? Uh, 
got it all over the place now. Oh, what a plum. <laughs> oh dear. Never mind, right. Let's, oops. Let's do the other side, shall we? And we put some glue on there and a little bit on there. Like that. Same thing again. So fold the box up. Make it nice and flat. Get the tip off the bottom of your box. <laughs> the little random bits that are all hanging about that being a bit of an untidy move. I forgot to put over to one side. <laughs> oh dear. Right, I'm going to fold your drawing now. Yeah, that's better. Right, I'm just going to just make sure that's nice and firm in there. I know, I'm sorry you can't see this very well, but it's because I'm, I'm working inside the box now, aren't I? There we go. How's that? Can you see that? Sort of. That's what I should have done, shouldn't I? Like that. There you go. De -de 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 -de. Give it a little tickle. <laughs> right. Oh, it's all good fun, isn't it? Now, we have a box with flappy bits. What you want to be doing is these thin edges, fold them back on themselves. So they're actually folded that way. All right. You see that? Good. Hold them back, each one, and then once you've got them all folded backwards, grab your glue, or whatever it is you're using, and put a nice squiggle of glue on those edges there. like that all right and then all you need to do is just fold them inwards okay and as you fold them in spread that glue out with your fingers or whoopsie daisy or stick it down firmly if you're using your double-sided tape but make sure whichever one you're using that you're sticking nice and firm hence I'm going to use my bow folder again now that little flap that we've got at the bottom because it's so small I'm not going to bother doing anything with it had it been a bit bigger than that I probably would have put some glue on that as well but because it is so small I don't really think it's going to be necessary you could put some glue on it if you want to, or if you want to put some tape on it. Whatever you like. Whatever floats your boat. There we are. Right. So now, especially when that glue dries, because obviously when you put glue onto cardstock, it does make it a bit softer because it makes it a bit wet. But when that dries, that is going to be an incredibly sturdy little box. I like that little box. Well, I don't know what it is about boxes. I like boxes. They can be really tricky to make though. I remember I used to have an absolute nightmare trying to make boxes. Some people can just do it, can't they? But I used to really struggle with them. Never mind. Got it now. There we go. So look, right. There's our cards. Fitting in lovely. And we've got a little bit of leeway to get our fingers in to actually take them out again now oh, let's just get that bit of glue off of there the next thing we're going to be doing is we're going to make the lid for said box so move that out of the way bring your scoreboard back in again and this time i'm going to use whisper white i think yeah, whisper white I'm going to use this time. Now I'm going to do exactly the same as what I did before, but just slightly different score lines. All right, so 
We're still working on the basis that our box is 6.25, obviously, because that's what we've just done. So I'm going to go across by three and one eighth, which takes me to nine and one eighth, but I'm not going to score there. I am going to score that first score line at nine and a quarter. So I've actually moved it across by one eighth. All right. So we've gone the first one, nine and a quarter. Now the box itself obviously is still one and a quarter deep. So as I'm here now, and now you've seen sort of how we work those measurements outwards, I'm just going to keep scoring. All right. So I've gone to nine and a quarter. So my next score line is going to be ten and a half. And then my next score line is going to be eleven and a quarter. All right. Now I'm going to do going back this way the same as I did last time because I only want an extra eighth in my width. All right. So I'm going to go to three and one eighth. So that's taken me to two and seven eighths for my first line. My next one is going to be at one and five eighths. Oh dear, nearly made a mess there. One and five eighths. And then my next one will be at three eighths. So that was the same as the last one. That was the same as the base. It's just this side has moved across one eighth of an inch. Now we're going to do the same again. We're going to turn it around and we're going to do exactly the same. So that what's actually happening is on our last box, the box we've just done, we actually had it so that the inside square of that box was six and a quarter. This one, the inside square, is going to be six and three eighths. All right. So same as what we just did. We're going to go to three and one eighths because that's half of six and a quarter. But then we're adding an extra eighth. So we're actually going to do this first score line nine and a quarter. The next one. Ten and a half because we've added one and a quarter. And then the next one at eleven and three quarters because we added another one and a quarter. All right, back the other way. So we go to three and one eighth because this side we're going to keep the same. We're not actually moving this side across at all. So we're staying at three and one eighth. So we've got, <coughs> oh, excuse me, our first one, three and one eighth. Then we're going to go to two, hang on, three and one eighth. No, what am I talking about? Yeah, we've moved across three and one eighth. <laughs> we've gone across three and one eighth. So our first score line is actually at two and seven eighths. Two and seven eighths, people. Go for two and seven eighths. All right, so we're then going to go to one and five eighths. So we've gone back one and a quarter and then we're going to go back one and a quarter again. So we're going to score it at three eighths. All right. And so now if you measure that square in the centre of your box, it will measure six and three eighths by six and three eighths all right so that has allowed for the thickness of the base to slip inside it otherwise you wouldn't actually be able to get the lid on the box right let's move that out of the way now here's a little tip how to make your cart your boxes really pretty without too much time very very simple the main focus of our card is that center square isn't it so we're going to cut a square in the center of the box that way you're going to see the lovely cards through the actual lid of the box and it also means that you don't have to spend too much time decorating your box to make it look really really special now then where's my ruler gone one ruler 
and a pencil. Now I'm going to do it with a ruler and a pencil. I am actually going to cut this in a minute with my um, stamping trimmer, which, just like the scoreboard, if you haven't got, you really, really should be getting. They are the best you can buy, without a shadow of a doubt. Right, so I am going to go in, how far in shall we go? About an inch, I think. I'm struggling to see where the line is on my ruler. So if my head suddenly appears, I do apologise. I think that's right. Is it there? Yeah, I think so. So I'm just going to do a very light line. Um all the way around because although I'm actually going to be using my trimmer to cut this hole I want to be able to see where the hole is properly so although the stumping trimmer can cut holes in the middle of things I'd still suggest drawing lines you can rub them out afterwards and it just helps to keep everything nice and neat. Do you know what? Have I done that in the wrong place? Why oh, is that line there? What have I done? One and a quarter. One and a quarter. Oh look, I've been doing it at one and a quarter. I said do it at one inch and I've done mine at one and a quarter. Oh well, one and a quarter or one inch, whichever one you like. They both look quite nice, I'm sure. There we go. Right, so as my holes that's where I, <laughs> my holes, there's my lines. Now, bring in my trimmer. Let's make sure it's unlocked. Right, if I line that line up in the middle of the gap, oh, there's a gap in the middle there. See, just there. If I put my pencil line in the middle of that, I know I'm in the right place. And I can then, then lift up put my cutting blade down and cut Ta -da! oh don't you love it when things are easy <laughs> makes life so much easier to deal with when things are easy to do there we go so we're going to go all the way around with those lines now obviously if you haven't got a trimmer get one <laughs> Or, <laughs> that's one for Christmas. Or, with faith in all that, <laughs> you have to use a knife and a ruler, I'm afraid. Do what I did though. Go for the easy option and get yourself a trimmer. Mm, so much better. Right, where's my rubber gone? Um, there it is. I just want to rub out those pencil lines there. Now I'm going to put a piece of window sheet in there over that hole so that my cards stay nice and protected but to show you what it's going to be like that is what you're actually going to see when the lid's on the box. <laughs> Pretty neat isn't it? Oh, I do think so. Right, um, let's just smooth those edges down a bit there, like that. Um, piece of window sheet, I did have a bit hanging around somewhere, hang on. Whoops, that's a bit. This is a bit from a project I was doing the other day. Is that going to fit? Oh, look at that, only just. Right. How big's that got to be? Should have measured that, shouldn't I? Um, right, you'll have to measure your one because obviously yours may not necessarily be exactly the same size as mine. But if it is, you want your window sheet to be four and a half inches square, I do believe. Let me just double check on this one. Yeah, four and a half inches. Could have just done that in the first place, really, couldn't I? Just measured the side of it. Dear. Never mind. Never mind. Now, window sheets, lovely stuff that it is, does need 
double sided tape to hold it on rather than glue all right if you try and do it with glue you will fail because glue is not designed for plastic is it well unless it's obviously specific plastic glue that's different but the glue that we use most definitely isn't so grab your double sided tape pop it on just want to go just around that edge and this double sided tape is obviously going to give it a little bit of strength as well that's it right let's just take that off oh come on that's better <laughs> she says no it's not peel off Last one. There we go. Right. Let's grab the bit of window sheet. Pop it on the top there. Would have been better if I'd got it nice and straight. But never mind. <laughs> it's kind of straight and kind of not. But... <laughs> Oh, dear. oh right fold and burnish your score lines people <laughs> and if you can't get your window sheet stuck squarely in the middle rather than squiffy go for it it makes a bit of a difference it makes it look a little bit neater for whoever's taking the lid off <laughs> oh golly gosh golly gosh whatever next do you think we should decorate this box at all or should we just leave it i think in actually maybe i'll leave it mm, yeah i will leave it because it's kind of a sort of a clean and simple styled card isn't it and we don't really want to be going too over the top on the actual lid because that's going to take everything away from the card itself won't it so no no i'm not going to decorate the card uh the lid rather sorry i'm just going to leave the lid all right there we go now exactly the same cutting as before so we're going to go straight down oops straight down that line and straight down that line turn it around same thing again straight down that one and straight down that one and we do the one next to it as well one next to that one same up this way now if you watch my other video where I was making the cards for this box you'd know that this box was actually done by request of one of my customers one of my customers, Stephanie, she, I was having a chat with her on the phone the other day and she was saying to me how she needed a box for six inch square cards. Hence, the box came to life. So, if you are one of my customers and you need something specific, tell me, won't you? I'll always make it for you or design it for you. because apart from anything else the way i always look at things is if one person needs it somebody else is going to be needing it as well and crafting really is about having fun isn't it and doing things and making things and i think as as crafters we do like to share what we make and there's no better way than sharing than by showing how to do it so like I say, if 
you need anything, just give me a shout and I'll make it up for you, design it for you, do a video for you, mm, whatever. Oops. There we go. Right, let's just notch in those edges. Uh, did you see me notch in the, the lid? Those lid tabs like we did before. See these ones here? Just notch them in. All the way around. Oops, looks like I've got a bit of a bit of something on my window sheet there. It's probably where it's been sitting around on my desk. <laughs> Getting in a mess. Right, move those bits out of the way. Exactly the same as we did last time. Grab your glue. Once you have your glue, fold your edges in. Put your glue on your edges. Fold them round. Hold it just for a few seconds, just so that the glue can grab onto itself. Or grab onto the card, rather. <laughs> grab onto itself. <laughs> well, that's one way, I suppose. Glue could do it, couldn't it? Yay, just go grab yourself. Right, I'm just going to use my bone folder again and just going to make sure that is nicely stuck down smoothly inside. And exactly the same as I did before. So, back over to this side. Pop some glue on those flaps there. And down. Hold them over, hold it over, there we go, whoops, and we'll just, just smooth that glue out under the card using my bone folder. Make sure it goes right up to those edges so that I've got a nice smooth edge going on. Alright, and then again, like before, fold your edges out. Pop your glue on. Yep. All the way around. Oh, I didn't fold the edges out, did I? Oh dear. Let's see if I can just bend those back, otherwise I'm going to end up getting in a mess. That's it. There we go. There we go. Right, fold them in, smooth that down, and that one, oops, and that one, and finally, whoopsie daisy, that one, there we go, you see how I'm just using my bone folder just to just to push that down nice and firm inside there all the way along just helps to give it a much nicer finish fold it all down nice and flat nice and squidgy give it a good squidge There we are. There. So there is our lid with the window in the middle. And you can probably see how much neater that edge finishes. And obviously it's a lot stronger as well. Pop your lid on your box of cards. And there you have it. Oh, I really like that looks really nice doesn't it so you've got your nice card through the window at the front so that's making your box look a bit special you've got your nice craft card on the back and you're done I think the only other thing that I'm going to do put a bit of ribbon around it 
Yeah, let's put a bit of ribbon around it. Let me just pull some ribbon off the reel. Hold on. Where's my gold ribbon gone? Um, 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 um. There it is. I don't know how much I'm going to need, so I'm just going to yank off a big bit. <laughs> well, that was a bit too much of a big bit there, wasn't it? Goodness me. That was way too much. Hang on, do you know what? I think I might get another bit. One minute. Yeah. I'll end up using it all. Hold on. One minute. I'm just getting some more because that was more than I wanted. That's better. That's better. Right. I think I'm just going to just try it in a bow. What do you think? Let's see if I can get a bow. First time. <laughs> what do you think? Ah, not really, no. <laughs> oh, let's try that again, shall we? Hang on. So, why are bows so difficult? Do you know, sometimes I can do a bow straight off. Other times, I could be here forever. Just time bow, after bow, after bow, <laughs> and still not get a decent looking bow. And I don't know why. Some people just do it straight away, don't they? Look, I've even folded the ribbon. Come on, folded. That's better. No, it's not. Oh, what? Oh, uh. right, if this one doesn't work, I'm not doing it. I'll start throwing my toys out my pram in a minute. Right, last go. Ready, steady. Um, hmm. What do you think? Uh, well, hmm, kind of, I suppose. Oh, I can't help fiddling with them. Did anybody else do this? It can't just be me. Tie a bow and then spend the next half hour messing about with it. <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure it's not just me. Ah, how's that? Is that alright? Um Oh, there we go. Look, I think I've got it. Yay! Super duper. That's better. Right. Now I've cut the tails too short. Oh. <sighs> right, that's it. I'm not touching it anymore. There you go. One <laughs> six by six box. With an incredibly difficult bow put on the front, <laughs> which I'm sure didn't really need to be that difficult, did it? Because it probably would have looked just as good without it. In fact, you know what? If you put it up there, look at that. That looks good. It looks like it's actually holding the wreath. Oh, no, I do like that. Yeah, that does look good. That looks like it's just going across the top of the wreath. Oh, look. Isn't it great when you do something and you suddenly think, oh wow, that is perfect. That looks just the way I want it to look. In fact, it looks so nice. Do you know what I'm going to do? Yes, I know. I'm taking it off again, but I've just had an idea. I am going to uh, I'm turn it upside down so I can lean on the box because that will give me something to work on. I'm going to get some double-sided tape. Can you guess what I'm going to do? Where does that need to go? I want it to go there so it's going to be just above. So I'm going to put, it's going to put a bit of tape there and I'm going to put a bit of tape there. <laughs> oh 
why don't you love it when a plan comes together even when it's one that you weren't actually expecting take that off now i've got to try and put this on Oops, if i just cut that in the middle because i'm going to put that my super duper snazzy wazzy bow right that's going to go there I might actually put some glue or something behind that later to make sure it doesn't come undone. But now I've got now I've got that on there. You see these I can just fold in. And because I've got my little flaps there, I can stick them in there, can't I? To keep it looking nice and neat. Which is why. I actually did it so that you're probably wondering why why I was actually doing sort of one bit of tape and not taking it all the way around. I just wanted to make sure it was going to work really before I did it. There's one. Now obviously this is quite a fiddly way of doing it. It probably would have been much easier if we'd done it like this in the first place. But things come to mind all the time, don't they? So, if you get an idea and it grabs you, go with it. And you can actually make something that you wasn't even expecting to do. Which I do think sometimes is even better really, isn't it? Obviously you want to make what you planned. But when you end up making something that works even better still, well, that's even better than what you planned then, isn't it? So with it take a chance see what, what happens you never know what life is going to bring you there. now i'm just going to trim those ends so that i can just tuck them inside that little flap this is not going to be easy is it i haven't really left a lot to tuck in but then i suppose the the flap that it's going in isn't that big anyway oops so a little bit cack handed there with the scissors, but never mind. That's it, done it. And then that bit of ribbon, with any luck, is gonna just tuck under there. There it goes, look, 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 look. Yes, get under there. I'll put some glue on it later. I'm not gonna put glue on it now though, because you, you can see what I'm doing, can't you? All right, so that's made it neat in there. Can you see how I've tucked it under? That's just tucked under there. If I do the same on this side as well. Oops. So just tuck it under there. It might actually hold without glue, you know. I don't know. So there it goes if it comes out i'll stick it back in again right but that has really given us a good finish now hasn't it so while i put that lovely gold ribbon on that gold ribbon now sits at the top of our wreath oh i do like that i'm really pleased with that oh happy days right so i hope you enjoyed that and i hope you enjoyed making it with me today if you need any of the items and you'd like to make your own just drop me a line you can order online through my shop at www.thecraftyspark.co.uk just click on the tab that says shop now or if it's a very small order and you don't want to spend too much on postage because stamping up charge a flat postage rate of £4.95 which if you're ordering a lot of goods is brilliant because you end up saving yourself a fortune on postage but if you're only ordering say one or two things it can be a bit hefty in which case not a problem just let me know what it is you want to order I usually put an order in at least once a week so let me know what it is you want I'll add it to my order and then I can send it out to you from me which will save a huge amount on your postage because then you'll just have to pay the flat rate UK postage rather than paying 
the flat four ninety five. All right, give you an example. You order one stamp set, your postage is one pound twenty six. Order one stamp set through my website, you'll be charged four pound ninety five. So it's always a good idea. Let me know what you want to order and I'll order it for you if it's only a few things. Other than that, I am sure I will see you again soon because I will be back with another video very shortly. So I will see you again very soon. Bye for now.